case, Elizabeth Johnson wasn't speaking to investigators about Gabriel, but Tammy Smith, she was talking a lot to Detective Ramirez. Now, Tammy Smith, you've seen her in court. She showed a range of emotions in that courtroom, especially recently with these tapes playing in court. We've seen her cry. We've seen her smirk, even shake her head in disagreement to some of the testimony. Criminal defense attorney Jason Lamb is here to talk more about Smith's courtroom demeanor. Jason, good to see you. Hey, good to see you, Ryan. Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon where you are. Oh, that's right. You got, well, a little bit over afternoon, but you got it right. Jason, let me ask you this. You were in the courtroom. You saw this testimony on Thursday. What can you tell us about what you saw from the jury and how they were taking a lot of these reactions from Tammy Smith? You know, Ryan, probably most interesting was the testimony about buying a baby. And in Elizabeth's, I'm sorry, in Tammy's interview, she talked about a birth mother uh, selling out a child from under them for about $80,000. And that's what caused her to break down in tears. And the jury sort of looked over, but there was no empathy from them whatsoever. They're disconnected with her. There was even one juror who I took note of, he rolled his eyes and shook his head. He was scoffing at her. So it really doesn't seem like there's a connection between uh, Tammy and the jury at this point. And that's something that could really prove fatal, particularly if she testifies next week. That is very interesting because you see emotional moments like that, and that's one of the things we always think of. How is the jury looking at that? And by the way, you speak about this moment where she talked about uh, money that people wanted to adopt for a baby that she tried to adopt. Let's play that sound for our audience. So they call us on Friday, and that attorney wanted us to go to Monday morning, so 24 hours basically in working hours. Monday morning, go to the court, pleading the court that we can give them like $3,500 for expenses and then pay her $39 fee. And I'm $3, like, $3,900 $3, fee. I what they're here for. Hmm. I know, but, but yet yeah, they were selling a baby. And this is, no, but that attorney Why? sold that baby, sold our baby for $80,000. She got $80,000 on Tuesday for that baby, that Tuesday when the baby was born. Instead of us, instead of us going through my attorney, that's a friend of mine charged me $250 for the adoption and his friend which was going to charge 200 to counsel the parents and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So $450 for an adoption that is the way it should be because children should not be bought. Wow and, and then you see Tammy Smith there talking about sold our baby and, and right there uh, Jason's where she starts breaking down when she talks about children shouldn't be bought. You know I have to ask this question what did you think about um, her crying at that moment, did it seem genuine to you? Did it seem planned? Uh, you know, we can never know what's going on in her head, but I want to get your take. Well, you know, that was actually interesting, Ryan, because I do think it was genuine. I think it was genuine because it actually sets the stage for why Tammy Smith has done what she's done, why she has gone so out of her way to manipulate so many people, to be a puppeteer, to put this whole thing into motion. That is the motive, the motive that the prosecutor should seize upon when they cross-examine her next week. She's not going to let it happen again. She lost this baby. She was devastated. It was emotionally wrenching to her. So how is she going to stop it from happening again? She's going to take control of the situation, and that's what she did with Elizabeth Johnson. Now, if you are a defense attorney working with uh, Tammy Smith right there, and we saw how her defense attorneys kind of come to her and they, they try to console her right there, how do you instruct her to, how can I put this, handle these emotions in a way that's helpful to her case and not harmful to her case? What do you tell them about emotions? Well, at this point in the game, I think that ship has sailed already. She's been emotional throughout the trial, um, through the crying, through the rolling her eyes, shaking her head. I think that's a done deal. But when you start a case, at least what I tell my clients is stay poker faced. You got to show some emotion. You don't want to be uh, stone faced throughout because this is a case about a child. And if a jury is going to connect with her, they need to see her as a mother. They need to see her as a warm individual. So you got to kind of balance that out a little bit. But generally speaking, I tell my clients, be appropriate, be respectful to the process, because every time someone uh, is in a courtroom as a defendant, they're testifying whether they take the stand or not. A jury always has their eyes on a defendant. So that's good advice to give a client, but it might be too late in this case because, you know, uh, Tammy has kind of gone off on her own path. But you know what, though? How about this side of it? She's showing this emotion, and, and 
on her tapes, on everything she does, she's talking about trying to help this baby. We know what the prosecution's accusations are, but at the same time, when you see her crying and breaking down, couldn't this just be a mother that felt so deeply about making sure that nothing happened to this child, that she is literally breaking down in court, that she is saying, you know what, I, I felt so deeply for this child, not because I needed to take him in my own custody, but because this child was in trouble with some parents that seemed to be unstable. I, I see where you're going, but Thursday's breakdown was about the baby in Tennessee where the mother sold the child out from under them. It wasn't about baby Gabriel. It was about a situation that was almost self-serving and selfish to her. That, you know, she and Jack were trying to adopt this child. They were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to be adoptive parents. And that crying was not one of an expression of concern. It was more of something that was lost. Something that was lost that really hurt her. And again, I think sets up the motive for her actions uh, that put her on trial in the very court behind me. You know, you make a great point there. Let's go to Tammy Smith talking to Elizabeth Johnson, talking about how she had to ask so many questions, kind of going to this same point of, is she being a mother to baby Gabriel? Is she trying to protect this child? Or is she somebody who had a self-serving interest? Let's take a look. I think she goes through a lot of depression over the fact that she really never wanted a baby to begin with. But I believe, both of us believe she deeply loves him. But because she never bonded with anybody, you have that one to two years to have the bonding and attachment. She never did that How with do you her know mother. That? Well, her mother was such a severe alcoholic. Oh, you know, her with her mother. Yeah, and she Elizabeth. never got, you, right, I'm okay, sorry. Right. Elizabeth never got that herself. Um, I know because of the way she talked about her mother um, was drunk 24-7, and then she died when she was about, I'm thinking, nine years old, maybe? When did she disclose that to you? I mean, that's pretty personal um, to disclose that. We talked every day from the t from that night that she so called. So from that night on, yeah. you guys have remained in contact mm -hmm. every day? Okay. Um, okay. Because I, I asked a lot of questions. I ask her constantly questions. I just, I'm that type of person. I'm an open book myself, and I just tell people everything about me. So I wanted to know everything about that baby's mom. So we talk about motive there. And again, I want to tie this a little bit into the emotions. We talk about motive, and we maybe there, do we see a mother who is saying, I'm talking to this woman, not necessarily because I want the, the child, but because this is a, a situation where a woman could be very unstable. This child could be in trouble. And I'm trying to help out. Do you do you get that sense in the courtroom? Do you get the sense that the defense is doing a good job in pushing no. it that way? Well, you know, I think that would be the defense's intent mm -hmm. to make Tammy seem as kind and nurturing as possible. But kind and nurturing people don't forge birth certificates. Mm -hmm. Kind and nurturing people don't uh, don't approach people in a jack in the box and tell them to engage in some type of fraud, you know, to get a child. That's more the mark of someone who is looking to manipulate people, who is working in their own interests. Okay, one quick question for you. Putting her on the stand, sure. we know she's gonna take the stand. Give me your quick thought about what's the most important thing you would tell her going up to the stand. Keep it together. Mm. Keep it together, the prosecutor is gonna push you. You gotta keep it together. All right, we'll see if she keeps it together on the stand. Jason, right. thank you so much, but stay right there. You're gonna join us again in a couple minutes. And folks, so far, the prosecution has played a lot of those tape phone calls and voicemails that Tammy Smith made during the investigation to find baby Gabriel. Now, after listening to her, we want to know from you, what's your impression of her so far? Give us a call, 1-877-JUR-13.